Time and time again, questions are asked about a Hajj that a person carried out in their previous years. It was his first Hajj, it was the obligatory one, but he wants to repeat it. And when this person is asked, why do you want to repeat your Hajj, you've, you've done it now. This person lists an array of things that he felt that he fell short towards during his Hajj, will, knowingly or unknowingly, sins that he wishes he didn't commit, or perhaps opportunities that he wished he'd made better use of. Now, of course, that request can't be fulfilled because if you fulfilled your Hajj, met the obligations or the conditions, then it will count as your obligatory Hajj, even with its shortcomings and everything after it is voluntary and extra. The point of mentioning this is that we don't want to be like this person who, when he or she comes back from Hajj, they find themselves harboring more regret than hope. That's not a good situation to be in. And it's for this reason that I want to offer those who are intending on embarking on this life and afterlife changing experience, Hajj, this year, several bits of advice. Advice number one, before you leave, position your heart correctly. Meaning, interrogate yourself in an aggressively sincere manner by asking yourself the question, what do I really want from this Hajj? Is it honestly Allah and the home of the hereafter and my salvation? Or are there still hidden traces of insincere grime that is latching onto my heart? Is it so that Allah praises me for being a pilgrim? Or is it so that people say such and such has performed Hajj a staggering X amount of times? Now Mecca is a place that has been visited by millions since time in memorial. And many of them have been, just like you, praised for their Hajj, and they enjoyed such a reputation for a certain period of time. But now that they've become the dwellers of soil, how have those words of praise helped them in any way? Many will carry out Hajj this year, perhaps millions. But will every one of them walk away with the prize that they apparently came for? Wait, are you enjoying watching this video? Why don't you do a good deed right now? Help us create more content like this by donating to MRDF. Click on the link below and make a contribution. Enjoy watching the rest of the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, he said in some profound words, he said, فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَيْنِ يَكُونُ مَقَامُهُمَا فِي الصَّفِّ وَاحِدًا وَبَيْنَ صَلَاتِهِمَا فِي الْفَضْلِ كَمَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Two men may be standing next to one another in the same line for the same prayer. But in reality, the difference between their reward in Allah's eyes is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. This is what separates them. So during Hajj, people will wear the same attire, visit the same sites. They will fatigue like one another, perspire like one another. But in the eyes of Allah, they are so different because of intentions that are invisible to people. And on that note, are there signs of the sincere? I say to you many, but I'm going to mention just one because it directly links to the topic of Hajj that we are speaking of. Imam Ibn Rajab mentioned the story of a man from the past who used to embark on the journey of Hajj every year on foot. Yet one night when he was asleep, his mother requested from him a cup of water and he found himself very lazy not finding the enthusiasm to get out of bed and to bring his mother a cup of water. Here he paused, he reflected on how he found the eagerness to embark on Hajj yearly by foot, but failed when it came to serving his mother who was just meters away in the same house. So he realized that what was giving him the energy to carry out his Hajj was the praise of people. And now that he's at home, needing to serve his mother with water, there's no one to praise him, so he has no energy. This began the beginning of his repentance to Allah. So position your heart correctly. The fact that we find the willpower to travel across the other side of the globe and endure the hardship of Hajj, whilst we remain sluggish, unmotivated, to go across the road to pray, Aisha in Jama'ah, or to wake up for Fajr on time, that's a worrying sign. And this is precisely why Umar ibn al-Khattab said, Al-Hajj qalil wal-Rakb kathir. The travelers for Hajj are so many, but the true doers of Hajj are so few.